In this quick tutorial, we will download and install the OpenAI GPT-2 model and then generate a text based on some input. Basically, we will use the OpenAI model to build the basic AI text generator. You can fine tune this for certain tasks like AI generated code, AI generated music, text and so on. But in this example, we will be generating text based on some input. Also keep in mind this is not some text from the training set or from a website, the AI generates its own unique response. Before we start, please consider subscribing to the channel if you want to see more of content like this. It also tells me that you like this type of videos and that I should produce more of them. So let's get started. I guess you already know what OpenAI GPT-2 is, but for the case that you don't know, here is a quick description. The model GPT-2 was trained simply to predict the next word in a 40 gigabyte of internet text Due to our concerns about malicious applications of the technology, we are not releasing the train model. Um, this was back in 2019, but after some time they have released it. So now it's completely available on GitHub. And as you can see, GPT-2 is a large transformer-based language model with 1.5 billion parameters trained on a dataset of 8 million web pages. GPT-3 is also available as of now in a beta version. I think in around one to two months it should be available for anyone since uh, they need to decide on a pricing model, uh, which should be largely better than GPT-2 with 170 billion parameters instead of 1.5 billion parameters. So what you need to do, uh, the first step is you need to clone the code. You can just download it or you can um, oh. You can just download it or just uh, copy or clone it from the GitHub repository. Uh, here I am in Windows, so I will be using Anaconda uh, because you will run into some types of problems with this. Um, different versions of Python, different versions of pip and so on. So it's really important that you note this here. Um, as from my experience, currently this runs only on Python 3.6. It doesn't run on Python 3.8 or 2. Point something. Only Python 3.6. I could be wrong, but for me it worked only with 3.6. So if you're using Windows, I would recommend to you that you just uh, download and install uh, Python 3.6 for Anaconda. Now you can just I will I will create a new folder. GP2. Uh, to test okay now we can clone the repository just type in git clone and paste the URL here now this has been cloned we can CD into the folder now in order to see what other um, root steps you have to follow you can go under uh, development here and see developers the readme file for developers so basically this is the step we have already done um, now we need to install the requirements if you type in here uh, there or ls depending if you are on windows or linux uh, you should be able to see that there is a requirement to text file. So what you need to do is run pip install minus r requirement.txt. Now you can download the model. Uh, you have three possible models you can download. Um, this is the one with 1.5 billion parameters, the largest one. Um, let's download the first one for speed purposes. So don't underestimate it. I have tried this with the largest parameter and it takes around um, one minute to get a response and I have a pretty decent uh, PC setup. So that's something you need to take under consideration when using the larger models. Now just run python download model.py. I'm running it with python since my default 
Python version 3.6 runs under, under Python and not Python 3. Um, now we have to wait for this to finish. One thing you also need to consider is if you're using the other models per default, the first model, the 140, 24 million parameter model will be used. So you will need to go into the file you're running and change it there to use that type of model. But you can ignore this for now. Um, so after we have downloaded this, we can build a Docker container, but we don't need to do that. Uh, we can basically run the samples that come with it. There are three types of samples. Uh, generate unconditional samples, which is just generate something without specifying any condition. Then a conditional sample, um, which provides us an interactive conditional sample, which means that we can type in some input and then we should be able to receive some output from that. So uh, let's run that. I'm again going to run this with Python. Uh, you can also ignore this. Um, I mean, the problem is that uh, some of those functions are deprecated. Um, probably it is not up to date, so you can either update this yourself or for now you can just ignore it. Uh, it will run uh, without concerning that. Now we should be able to see our model prompt. Uh, here we can type in some input. So. Let's say we want to type, type in um, Now you can just press enter and wait for this to execute The cool thing about this is you can fine tune this uh, in which you feed it a certain type of data, certain type uh, of data that you want to generate results on. For example, you want to write articles about Google SEO. So you, you would feed it a lot of blog posts about Google SEO, and then it should be able to produce better results, fine-tuned results for the topic you are searching for. Uh, so here we have the first sample in the community who need to understand the process more effectively and quickly. Ellie's speech was in addition to the more detailed effort to find a better way to communicate. She said a more effective way of connecting tech professionals to South Minneapolis of technology workers could make a difference. Yeah, as you can see, um, the results are pretty interesting. You can play with this and every time you run it again, you should receive different results. So you can play with that. And as I have mentioned, if you want to produce better results, first of all, you, would, you should go with the larger model. And second of all, um, you should fine tune or train it to specific data sets. If this is something you would like me to do, just leave me a comment down below and I will explain in another video how you can achieve that. Also, if you would like to see a tutorial how to integrate these results in a front-end framework like React using a proper backend, let me know in the comments. If enough people are interested in that, I will create a full-scale tutorial on how to build an entire app with front-end, back-end and a database using this AI text generator. I hope you found this video useful. If you liked it, consider subscribing to the channel to see more upcoming videos about software engineering, career and business. If you want more on this topic, leave a comment. You can also subscribe to the newsletter. The link is in the description below or just wait till the end screen of this video. Thank you so much for watching and see you next time.